quite a number of the cases I do nowadays are reverse shoulder replacements, where they were more reserved for the salvage procedure before. Why is reverse shoulder replacement so popular? For the shoulder to work right, the ball has to stay in the socket. The humeral ball has to stay centered than the glenoid socket and then the soft tissues around the shoulder move it. What dynamically holds the ball in the socket is your rotator cuff. Uh, the set of four muscles or tendons that basically keeps the ball centered in the socket through a mechanism called concavity compression. So if you look at your shoulder, your shoulder is a ball and socket, and the ball has to stay centered. And what holds the ball in the socket, like my fingers, are those four rotator cuff tendons. Now, the ball socket relationship in terms of size is unique. The ball is very big and the socket is very small. So you can think of it as a beach ball on a dinner plate. The ball again is much bigger than the socket or the, or the dinner plate. Or you can think of it as a golf ball on a tee. And that intrinsic difference in size makes the joint naturally unstable. So the soft tissues, namely the rotator cuff that holds the ball in the socket are very, very important. And without it, the shoulder won't work right. If those rotator cuff tendons aren't working, then the ball starts to wobble and you get abnormal kinematics and abnormal wear, uh, bad arthritis or rotator cuff arthropathy, a specific type of arthritis because the rotator cuff is not working. And that's different from primary glenohumeral arthritis, which is where the cartilage breaks down. So in those situations where the rotator cuff is not working right, or there is significant bony deformity, which creates an abnormal ball socket joint, then the shoulder is best treated with a reverse shoulder replacement. So rotator cuff arthropathy, significant bony deformity, and then if you extend that, really any condition where the soft tissue is abnormal, atrophic tissues from previous surgery, uh, trauma, revision surgery, then you can see that the indications for a reverse shoulder replacement dramatically increase. So in situations where you have bad rotator cuff disease or significant bony deformity that predisposes to posterior instability or posterior subluxations, such as bad B2 glenoids or, or C glenoids, you have to create a fixed fulcrum. You can't rely on the soft tissues or the bad bony anatomy to provide that stability. So in those cases, the reverse shoulder replacement changes the anatomy to allow you to have a more constrained joint and therefore a stable pivot point and therefore a stable shoulder joint that will move appropriately. That's the summary of how reverse shoulder replacements work from a biomechanical aspect. We're gonna talk about the history of the evolution of RSAs next.